My name is Quentin Henney. I'm a technical advisor to Prescott Capital, and we are very, very large supporters of BCM. We've been shareholders and, and supporters of Sergey and his efforts uh, for the better part of five years now. And, and you know, to see news uh, like this that came out today is quite interesting. So, Sergey, tell us a little bit about this very short but very meaningful news release. What do you think uh, RTZ is up to here? Like they've they've staked discrete areas that you know some a little bit of ground next to you, but uh, a lot of these uh, claims are are in two different areas that are you know proximal but not right on top of Thompson. Do they see other targets? What do you think they're doing here? A logical explanation would be certain. They uh, validate. Uh, our previous uh, interpretations uh, about the great potential of Thompson Knowles itself, uh, that it has potential to become a tier one deposit uh, that will be a producing mine in the future. Yes. That's uh, the well, number one conclusion. Number two conclusion is that uh, also uh, they consider it seriously uh, that it may be a significant size operation uh, that could need it more land, more uh, water sources. I'm looking at the locations of their claims, uh, and one of them is in the middle of the valley, uh, but uh, close to the Thompson Knowles uh, controlling uh, water well. Uh, the other is probably most likely uh, on the extension of the major structure that comes through Thompson Knowles. Uh, so my interpretation uh, based on this is, yes, they think uh, this is potentially a, a significant uh, uh, project uh, for copper in, in Utah, and therefore uh, they're defensive and trying just to build up uh, their land position. Okay, well, that, that would make sense. Look, uh, for people listening, I think it's important to understand that uh, this particular company, Kennecott Exploration, is part of Rio Tinto, but it's also uh, associated with the, the Great Bingham Canyon mine in, you know, a little ways to the north, you know, near Salt Lake. And Bingham Canyon it has been a tremendous mine over many, many years. It's one of the biggest copper producers in the world, traditionally has been. Uh, but it's it's getting long a tooth. It's starting to run out of ore. In fact, there's a pretty hard stop ahead for Rio Tinto. So would you say it's a fair statement that uh, it's very critical for our Rio Tinto RTZ to to look for the next great copper discovery right now? Well, I fully agree with that at Bingham Canyon. Uh, they're switching uh, at the bottom uh, uh, of the pit. They're switching to underground mining, started mining some scarns. Uh, but uh, they're high grade, but smaller, smaller in size, and that, that creates a deficiency to the smelter. So therefore, apparently, they're trying to secure uh, potential resources that could lift off the ground very quickly. And we are in a, in a, in a perfect spot here because, uh, look, it's a desert. Infrastructure is good. They're in reasonable proximity. Uh, railroads per, no endangered species, no First Nations. It's very sparsely populated, the area. Look, it's an ideal space uh, for uh, a, a future mine to uh, lift off the ground. Uh, so that makes logical sense to me. So that's uh, that's very exciting news. You know, clearly Rio Tinto sees a good uh, geologic story down here. I'm very excited uh, to put the third jewelry in my discovery crown because uh, uh, following uh, the significant discovery in Mongolia, the Utolgoi, by the way, which is now run by Rio Tinto. And uh, uh, as an example there, they also went into the project through the back door, <laughs> building up positions around it until <laughs> and then making a, a, a deal with Ivanhoe. So for them, it's uh, not new. They tested strategy uh, carefully, but surely uh, full in moving and taking uh, position uh, for future actions. In short, it sounds like Rio Tinto likes to follow Sergey. <laughs> and, and grab his copper. <laughs> yes, indeed.